anybody know where we are? <laughs> we are in this crazy world and we're doing it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Janine and Dr. Brenda and Dr. Brenda and Janine. We're all here, both of us, okay. all here. Dr. Brenda is trying to find out where you are live. Uh, is it on your personal page? I don't know. I don't know. It's not showing up anywhere. Um, it's not showing up on my personal. Maybe we're not live. Um, it's recording and it says live Facebook. Yeah, interesting, hey? Let me just uh, check this. <laughs> yeah, okay, we are live in the US. Yes, we're live. We are live on my business page. We're it on works. Your business page? Yes, we are. We okay, are, we there are. There we are. Oh, yay, okay. I've got we a process down. I've got the process down and I just wanted to to uh, test it. So this is a little bit of a testing ground and why it's a testing ground is today is a magic day because we are starting a new fantastic little series here as we share our stuff out on um, the alphabet game it's called. Woohoo! Who wants to play? Let's play, let's play, let's play. So we are just sharing things out and I'm going to uh, let Dr. Brenda um, introduce herself and then I'll introduce myself and then we'll get going. Okay, let's let's uh, roll with it. I'm I'm uh, checking 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 my group. We are we are here. Hey, hey, my financial freedom for women group. How you doing? I am Dr. Brenda. I'm a sociologist, a financial coach, founder of Gutsy Women Finances Community, where fun and finances meet. And I'm a full-time RVer traveling the USA. Ooh, with my three cats, there goes one, there's Coco, there's the tail, Coco just got back from the vet with Coco, so she's, uh, should be a little loopy. <laughs> and, and to you, Janine. And over to me, Janine is, hello, I'm Janine McJanet, welcome, we, we are getting this ironed out in terms of sharing it to the right places. I live up in the Yukon in the land of the midnight sun, which is in the summer and in the land of the dark and, and mystery in the, in the winter, which is where I am. I'm a hypnotherapist. I'm an integrative health coach, and I am a specialist in women's empowerment and play. And I love bringing women to a place where they can feel free. And that's why Brendan and I have connected in this way, because it's all about freedom. And we've started this fun, fantastic thing today called the alphabet game. Because we really want to play. We want to inject more play and more, oh, drinking her tea, right? When I gave you the cue, more fun into more the day. Fun. Oh, more fun, yes. <laughs> yeah. So this is what we're doing. And we thought, well, why not just play with the words? We are word wordologists. Um, we are wordsmiths. Most of us in, most of us in this world are. And so we just want to play with it. And today is a... And what we're going to do, just to sort of like put it out there, is we're going to come up with a word and we're going to have little short conversations about it, a word or two or three or ten. If you've got a word, drop it in, send us the DM. We're going to go right through the alphabet weekly, A, B, C, D, E, you know the rest of it. And um, so we have had some words drop in from some viewers and I've got a couple of words up my sleeve and I'm sure that Dr. Brenda too, does too. So let's play this. I know that it's, it's not, it's kind of like a game show, but there's no stress. There's no pressure, nothing like that. It's like, how can we have a really good time with words? Because words are everything. So I'm going to pass the mic over to you and I want you to just to pull a word out of your mind and give us, you know, a few sentences about it, and then I'll have a go, and we'll play back and forth. And oh, we'll get it. Well, this is not the word that I had originally come up with, but I gotta just pick the word animal today, okay? Oh. Because I just got back. Coco, where's Coco? She's she's checking the bird life out. So I took uh, Coco into the vet this morning. Took her into a. One that's further away, like 45 minutes away, because it's a better vet. So animal is on my mind. And, um, you know, I mean, as a financial coach, too, you know, it's like we love our animals. And 
um, there's a, like a vet right across, retired vet from Canada on the other side of my RV here, who's been really helpful. But she's like, you know, you'd be surprised how many people like have to put an animal down because they can't afford treatment. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's not, you know, I'm not, we're not talking about real over the top treatment. We're talking about basic, basic types of things. So it's like, I mean, my animals, that's who I live with. Um, I had, uh, I was at, I was, I'm, so I'm already, I'm, I'm going to. Keep going. I am, I am, I was at an RV park getting uh, my windshield fixed. I was in San Antonio, Texas. And the guy fixing the windshield was this younger guy. And he's like, you know, can I talk to you about relationships? And I kind of turned around because I, I said, you know, I live in an RV with three cats. Are you sure you want to talk to me about relationships? Because, yeah, my relationships, my primary relationships are with my cats. Animals. Well, yeah. Animals. Animals. That's great. Animals. Now, now, should I go on animals or do I pick another I word? I, I was hoping you'd show us your your dog is sleeping. Oh, she's asleep. Yeah, she's. Uh, asleep. Yeah. I've got my beautiful boomer over there, and, and you'll see. Yeah. I'll grab her. Hang on. <laughs> oh, boomer is boomer sits on the chair with with Janine. Boomer is a cool, cool dog. So, yeah, yeah, we're into animals. To me, cats are easier to take care of. And they're independent. There she, there's Boomer. Here's oh, Boomer. 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 He's just like a little kitty cat. <laughs> yeah, the way he allows you to hold him like that. Oh, she, she's a sheep. She's a sheep. Okay. She well, with Boomer, it's hard to know. I know. She's beautiful. Okay, so animals have a fantastic. Okay, you can go back to bed now, sweetie. <laughs> Um, animals have an incredible role in our lives um, so much. We could actually dedicate a whole half an hour conversation to animals, but oh, I know. in the light of the gameliness of this, I'm going to choose another word um, that is, are you ready? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I want to choose this word because it's, it, it, it says more than what you think it does. And are you ready? I'm ready. Come on, come on, come on. Abracadabra. How did I know that? Abracadabra. Know that? Where does that word come from? It's um, it's in Hebrew. It comes from, uh, or some people say it's from the corruption of the Hebrew words, which means I will create as I speak. And it's the act of speech which magically creates new realities. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. So as I come into this day, we think, you know, how can... We're, we're creating magic right now. We're, we all create magic every time we open our mouths, <laughs> pretty much, because it tends to just run. It just tends to be habit. It tends to be pattern, whatever comes out, abracadabra. So that's what I was thinking I'd bring. What do you think? Come on, let's you go. Know, it, all, it all fits like with the magic thing, too. But I yes. it is, I just finished writing an article this morning. and it's, Article. Uh, it's on like millionaire mindset, but it's all about mindset. And it's like. If you put it, you know, you put it out to the universe, we, we're both business people, we're, we're doing what we can do, but it's like you have to put the energy and put those abracadabra words out there in your own voice for, for it to do some magic. I yeah. like abracadabra. Abracadabra. And it's, it's really used like it's an in, awesome in the awesome word. It's an awesome word that really brings awareness into our authentic living because that that word like it's it's what we think we become what we speak we become. So what magic can you put into it with your abracadabra it's like one of our questions in hypnotherapy. We get our little magic wand and we go. What, what do you really want, and then you just go what do you mean what do I really want what do you really want. You know, what would life be if you didn't have all these problems in your way? And that's magic when you can start thinking about it, right? And that's where we have to focus on. So that's abracadabra. Okay, give us another A. Actually, Desiree came on. I'm going to pick one from the hat. Excellent. She um, came on earlier and gave us some words and awareness was one of them. And I like we can we can tackle that one. So I'd like you to speak a little bit, bit about it. And me too. When awareness. you said when you said awareness, the first word that came to my head was you no, know, because we often think the same thing. 
Yes. Awareness. Awareness. First thing that popped into my head was habits. Oh, habits. I thought I was looking for an A word. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't an A word. So okay. For habits. Because, you know, being aware, that's like the first step in like understanding what's a habit and what's not a habit and then why you're creating these habits. When you become aware of your behaviors, you know, the week, sometimes we just do things routinely. In the daytime, we just go through this whole routine. Once we become aware of it, now we can kind of change things around. But you have to be aware of it, and then you have to want to change. So that was the first thing that popped into my head. Awareness, what pops into your head? Doesn't have to start with an A. What pops into my head, and everyone says awareness is the first step. But I think there's a step to get to awareness. And so that's what popped into my mind is curiosity. You need to have that curiosity to become aware, right? You just can't all of a sudden like become aware. You got to go, hmm, I wonder what more. I wonder what's beyond that cage, that corporate cage, whatever bars you have, whatever prison bars you have up to get aware. You have to like, I want to know what's going on there because awareness just doesn't happen. It, it's got to be instigated. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, also, because I mean, I think about when I was sitting at the dining room table, I was aware of how unhappy I was, but I couldn't figure out what I was going to do instead. But I think like curiosity is such a part of who I am and who you are, that I automatically kind of jump to the conclusion, which is wrong, that everybody has that same level of curiosity, but you're right, yeah. they don't. But yeah. You have to, you know, if you are don't open your mind to all these other possibilities if you're not curious you're probably not going to hit the awareness yeah button. yeah right so that's it all right chuck chuck another a word out there dr brenda okay yeah i'm going through my um one of the ones that popped up was accomplish Ooh. accomplish what, do, what is, how does that make what do you what do you think of when you say it accomplish accomplish the first thing that sets in and it was actually a feeling it, it went it totally bypassed my mind and came right into my stomach was accomplished means um getting something done it means doing something great or fantastic but then my mind stepped in and said whoa hold on feelings it's not just about that so there was a lot of history that came up with those feelings fear of of getting out there and being and doing the best at everything to to feel that accomplished to have a degree is accomplished i don't have a degree but i still accomplish a lot so my mind stepped in and just went accomplishing what does it mean to you janine and i'm thinking out loud here because this is this is the nature of this abracadabra call is to just um what do you want? It comes back to identity. What do you want? And how can you know when you will accomplish something? It's all about goal setting. It really is. Whatever that goal is, how can you accomplish it? You can accomplish looking great, having a shower, you know, doing your exercise, doing all these habits and patterns. But how can you, how can you know when it's, it's done, when, when it's accomplished? There's a, there's a, you know, a bit of celebration that has to come in and acknowledgement. I think I have to put together with accomplishment, just like curiosity and awareness. I think acknowledgement comes in with accomplishment. Carry on, your turn. I, I went down a different path. Mm -hmm. So when I when I when I said accomplish, my first thought was I kind of ended up back in that corporate environment. Oof. You know, I mean, I, I do have my PhD. I have accomplished a lot. I accomplish it as as my career. But when I think of accomplish, I often think think about what we at society deems to be success and not success. So I've spent a lot of years now removing my my identity from what I do, you know, that I was, you know, I was the researcher and I specialized in this and this is what I did. And I've had to kind of remove those onion peels. So accomplish almost makes me feel like I'm living up to somebody else's idea of what it means to be successful, whether it's the money or the house or the career or however we define this. And for me, it's like, I have to back off of accomplish. I, I work, I accomplish all kinds of things in the business. I almost have to throw that word out sometimes and just let it sit. I don't have to accomplish something today. 
I don't, you know, I can measure my worth through another way than what I do. So yeah. that was the trigger that it, it touched off in me, which I was not anticipating because I just pulled it out of the list. Interesting, though, because you've attached accomplished to what you have to do, and then you've acknowledged, you know, what that is. So is accomplishment, you know, it, it's a good segue into, it's not all about what you do, but it's about who you are, what I am. And we just talked about that identity piece, which really, really comes to, you know, flow into the next word, which could be authenticity, right? How does, how does identity and authenticity connect with each other see all these pairs of words seem to be coming together today and authenticity you know what what is it is it um is it a label is accomplishment something that you have to really like does it have to be terrific or can just getting out of bed and cooking yourself a beautiful breakfast can that be accomplishment can smiling and laughing see i'm sort of playing with the different words here but um who do you identify as rather than what you do? Who are you? You see, we want to be cautious about that labeling thing because our identity, I can't wait till the eyes, our identity is the most powerful force that we have knowing who we are. Um, so yeah, authenticity. Is it is it, That's the word I'm throwing out there now because a lot of people go, I just want to be authentic. I want to speak my truth. I want to speak my, and be authentic. What does that mean? in terms of busting out of the norm and growing and creating something new and big and different. Do you want to label yourself? This is my authenticity and I'm staying with it. It's speaking my truth, but our truth changes with every accomplishment, with every moment in the day. So that's so what I wanted to throw. What do you have to say about that? I'm trying to remember who, who I was talking to that did not like that word. Was it me? Yeah, it could have been me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so back yeah. up what was what was that conversation what don't you like about authenticity well it's a word that I'm now looking at differently because of the connection to identity identity changes we change every moment every time we grow authenticity um it kind of keeps you held in it it stops you from making different choices because when you grow into something different or someone different, your level of authenticity changes. It's not who at that moment, I'm getting kind of philosophical here, but at that moment in my authentic place right now, if I step out and do something that's different, that's not authentic to who I am right now. It's authentic to my new me. So well, that's why identity can come in and just say, well, let's just see what the what the difference is when when people say when I say I just, you know, I'm authentic, I'm authentic. What does it really mean? Is it a label? Is it? Yeah, a new I think um, I mean, I think the challenge for me, uh, I mean, I, I, I am authentic. I am, you know, you, I mean, I got. This is me. You're, you're real. But, yeah. but, but we all wear different hats. So if I were to go in front of an audience and uh, make a presentation, I've got to dress the part. I am maybe a little bit uncomfortable because I'm not in my RV gear, which is my norm now, yeah. but I am still authentic, but I am presenting things at a different, in a different manner. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm not pretending to be somebody that I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you know, I, I think also with the authentic piece, like, you know, we put ourselves out there as business people. And at some point we got to say, look, this is our personality. This is our, these are our values. This is what we stand for. And it's okay if we're not a good fit for you, right? I mean, so being authentic doesn't mean, I mean, you have to, people are, not everybody loves our personalities. Well, yeah. they, they should, okay. but they don't. Oh, wait, now, should, 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 should. No, there's <laughs> oh, always the option. We'll wait get until the S word. <laughs> well, I don't want you or I to be too abro-dietetical about it. <laughs> oh, my God. What is that word? I'm just going to say that again. We're getting a little bit abro-dietical. Abro-dietical. And what that means is that becoming extremely picky or delicate or dainty about something. So that's just a new A word because I think that we have yeah, to yeah, increase our even, vocabulary. I'm not even sure if you're pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> What's wrong with abrodietetical? 
I don't know. That's that's that doesn't uh, sound right. But yeah, it's where you're extremely dainty. So perhaps you know when you when you go and you do things that aren't authentic, that's when you're stepping into that abro diet, abro dietical. Okay, that's what it is. We have, an, we have another word. We have another word. What does somebody toss out another word at all? Oh, let's just go up to the list here. Um, artsy. Hmm. Artsy. Ooh, I love that word. What does artsy mean to you? Artsy, I love artsy. So, but I, but here's the thing. I think every one of us has some creativity. I, I run into so many people who say, "Well, I could never do that. I can't draw. I can't write. I can't, 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 can't." And I, you know, we're both very, very creative in all the stuff that we do. So, artsy creativity—it's all part of us. But for some people, it's it has to come. I mean, you've got folks like who have brain injuries, and then they be, then they become artists. It's like it's hiding all in themselves anyway. It's just a different part of the brain, yeah. different part of the brain we have to exercise. But artsy to me, I also have this image of, you know, just a wild, free flowing woman on the beach, dressed in all kinds of colors and. And it's a freeing, you know, I feel that, there you go. It's a feeling that comes with that art scene. You know, it's somebody who, who dances to her own drummer. Oof. That's that's what jumps into my mind. How about you? That's great. Well, when, when I just saw the word artsy there, I'm like, well, what, what is artsy? And I go back to conditioned childhood memories and think of the school yard. And there were, there were categories of people. Some were artsy and some weren't. Uh -huh. And those that were artsy, I envied because, wow, they can draw really well. It was a label. Again, coming to identity, it was a label. But now in my mature fifth decade, sixth decade, whatever it is, um, artsy does have a much more expansive definition, more creative, more expressive, and it's going way beyond just drawing. It's, it's how we use our words, how we use our body, how we use our minds, how we are creative, how we stand up for ourselves, you know, even creating boundaries to, to me is, is, is a form of artist, artistry, because we are, here I go. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say. What's the word abracadabra? <laughs> it's just flowing, but that feeling of just creating something, creating wisdom, creating a poem, creating writing, creating anything is artistry. Walking down the street, you know, with your hair flowing back and your hips moving around, you know, there's a little bit of art to that too. It's well, just being you. It is freeing though. You know, when yeah. you, I mean, you think about that expression that just the way that you, you, know, so you can physically carry, your, carry yourself. So I like that word. Yeah. Can, it, I, can I toss one out? Sure can. This, this is for you. Okay. Apology. It's for me. Now that makes me go, oh my gosh, what do I owe someone an apology? <laughs> Guilt, it slammed me right down. But then again, as, as the second thing that came to me was unapologetic, but we're dealing with apology. Um, apology. <clears throat> I'm from Canada. We all say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You you actually are walking down the street and someone walks into you and you're like, I'm sorry. And we apologize for everything. You know, if you don't hear somebody or somebody doesn't hear you, you're like, I'm sorry. The word is thrown around just like crazy. And I'm doing all my best to pull it back. So whenever I hear someone say I'm sorry, because people pleasers say it a lot. You know, if if we are striving to get approval from other people to belong, to be loved, what's the first thing we do? I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And we start to shrink in. So if you are a sorry person, I want you to really pay attention to when you say sorry. And even before you open your lips, think about it. Do you, are you really sorry? Like we're very, we're not sorry often, but we say it a lot. And when we say it, it puts us in, in that really secondary kind of friggin' whatever I'm trying to say. It makes us diminish ourselves a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's Don't really be funny. sorry unless you really are have hurt somebody, you know? Just to say thank you for your patience. If you're late, I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. 
just a thank you for your patience. Be you coming back to right back to being authentic and standing up and setting your boundaries. Yeah. Okay. And, it's, and I, I hear it more from women too. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I, 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 you know, last what, December when I got here, I started playing pickleball and there was a, another woman playing pick, pickleball learning. I was learning, she's learning. And every time she, you know, oh, missed, missed the ball, did something. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Was just, she Canadian? <laughs> I have to ask her. I don't, she could be, but, uh, you know, it's like, it's like, don't apologize. Stop saying sorry. Just, she's like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm just so used to it. But I, it's mostly the women that I, I hear this from a lot. And then, then the, the level of sincere apologies, either given by me or received by me tend to be pretty rare. It's like yeah. a real apology doesn't happen all that much it's mostly just because i should apologize so therefore i do but i don't really feel bad about what i did <laughs> yeah yeah fake apologies and you can tell when they're inauthentic right yeah, yeah. like kids for example i'm sorry rolling their eyes <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah there's there's so many other words that you can choose instead of i'm sorry and that thank you for a, your patience that was a great that was a great word you got one should we I do have one more, that? and it's a really good word. It's it, the word is Abbott. <laughs> Wait, Not again. no, Not it's a again. different word. I know. I want to learn new words. January is a month of learning. I know we're into February, but it's going to carry on. Abacadary. It's either abacadary or abacadary, and it's a special type of poem. And this really aligned with me today because each line begins with a different letter of the alphabet from oh, A to Z. Man. It's the real it. word. So I'm, I wrote I'm this little to poem. I'm That's just gonna, I'm happened. gonna like every time I put my hand up is a new start to a line. I just, you know, I, Kate, you ready? It's just a short one. I'm not going through the alphabet, but a little girl, bold and beautiful curls, caught a great big fish on the lake. Day after day, enough bait was at play, fearing nothing could get in her way. Gigantic and slimy, heavy fish, just try me, indifferent. And then I had a hard time carrying on from that. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's a real thing that Hoping you... for joy, kicking her sister. Lots of laughs. Wow, we could, we could go in a whole nother... Many, like, many times we could, Back and forth. we could like end by just you switching hey, off go. until we get like a really fun story. Ah, um, what's the word? A B E C E D A R Y, abacadary, or abacadary, oh. or abacadary. Oh, and um, I got the. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's there's it's got the s sound abacadarian. An abecedarian. Yeah. So I, I was just an abecedarian and we practice abecedariousness. Excellent. I like Awesome. That. Awesome that and incredible. Fun. Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. Uh, uh. Contagious. Admirable. <laughs> Very Let admirable. me just go back to the list and there's one more awesomeness is right in there, but um, arriving. Let's choose that as the last word. Uh, the last word to depart on is arriving. I, you know, as an RVer, I love that word because mm -hmm. my my first instinct is, you know, I I I get in this rig and I'm it's a you know there's a fair amount of stress involved in getting to my destination, and then I get to that place I am arriving and I feel like this sense of joy and newness yeah. and freshness and arriving so i think about it that way but uh you know clearly it has um uh, you know psychological mental breakthroughs too like um even my ideas i mm -hmm. mean you've you've known my last this whole for a long time i my i've been on a roller coaster and it's like you know it's so sometimes you know, I get this idea and I feel like zoom, I'm I'm arriving at a new destination. I'm I'm arriving, I'm I'm moving things into a new place, I'm arriving. Mm -hmm. And um so I, I it, um, that's kind of where where I'm going. You 
tell me. <laughs> Arriving says a lot because I love your expression and your, it's like a metaphor for those who aren't able to travel um, as you do, but every morning on upon our awakening, we have the opportunity to arrive in a new moment. And that whole journey of awakening to where you are and how you feel and arriving in the moment, we have a choice all the time. We can arrive feeling or thinking one way or another. So it comes down to really being conscious about what our thoughts are. So whenever we arrive from moment to moment in our days, we can arrive in a way that really meets our values and that we are aligned with. And it's about being curious and then being aware. Yeah. Yes. I just want to say that, you know, I love being an aquabib with you. Oh my gosh. Are you, we, are you really going to play this game? You want us to pick out like crazy words. It's not a crazy word. Haven't you heard of it? It's be, just so many. Be is, be is coming up next week. Bodacious, bold, brave, Brenda B. Oh, Brenda. Brenda. Um, okay, well, cheers as we drink our water because we're aqua bibs, which is really someone who likes to drink water rather than alcohol. Tea, tea is water. It's a real word. Okay, I got the clink over to this side. You got the clink up? Clink. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Okay, that was fun. It was fun. Send in your let B letters and uh, yeah. It's going to be fun next week, next Friday, and we'll do it again. Thank you, Dr. Brenda, and thank me, Janine McJanet, for showing up in this awesome, incredible, as alert as we are and feeling just alive and, 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 and awesome. Awesome. All right. Enjoy your Fridays, guys. Have a good weekend. Okay. Ciao, ciao. I'm going to go suck on an aqua bob right now. <laughs> it's an icicle. Ciao. Bye.